We're continuing to look at the work of the Holy Spirit, and we realize that we need the Holy Spirit. The early church often talked about being filled with the Holy Spirit, and we're thinking now, well, what does the Holy Spirit do? Uh, There's a definition of the work of the Holy Spirit. It says, the work of the Holy Spirit is to manifest the active presence of God in the world and especially the church. He'll manifest the presence of God in our lives and through our lives. When the Holy Spirit is present, there's an awareness of the presence of God. Uh, Last week we saw that the Holy Spirit empowers us. Uh, He empowers us and He gives life. And the whole realm of nature, it's the Holy Spirit that gives life to all creatures, whether in land, in the sky, or in the sea. He gives spiritual life when we're born again through faith in Jesus Christ. And so he also gives power for service. Luke 4 and 14, it says, Then Jesus returned to Galilee filled with the Spirit's power. And so the Holy Spirit empowered him to preach, to teach, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, and to raise the dead. And the same Holy Spirit also empowered the disciples to preach, to teach, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, and to raise the dead. And the Holy Spirit still empowers believers today. And the prophecy of Joel, the promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, is for the last days. And that started on the day of Pentecost. And we're surely far more in the last days now, 2,000 years later. So this prophecy is for you, for me, and for the church of today. The Holy Spirit also empowers the church with spiritual gifts that we're going to look at later. Uh, And our prayer lives, the Holy Spirit empowers our prayer and makes them effective. And the Holy Spirit also empowers us to overcome spiritual oppression to the sharing of the gospel and God's work in people's lives. That brings us to this morning. This morning I want us to see how the Holy Spirit purifies. He purifies When we repent of our sins and receive Jesus into our lives, the Bible tells that in that moment, we are declared holy. Because Jesus in that moment took upon himself our old sinful lives, and on the cross he paid for all of that sin by shedding his blood for us. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin, all sin that's washed by his blood. In verse 9 it says, But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Jesus placed in us his perfect life, lived without sin. And before God, we're declared holy and accepted into the family of God. Right from that moment till we see him, face to face, we are every day we're declared holy. Not by how we've behaved that day, not by uh, how good we've been that day or how, how hard we've tried that day, but we're made holy by the work of Christ on the cross. And that's why that we have that certainty that whether it's a good day, bad day, or day in between, when we die, in a moment we will see him and we will be like him. Because we're not trusting in ourselves. We're trusting in the finished work of Christ. But it doesn't take long after we're saved to realize that no matter how hard we try, we're still far from holy in our practice and in our lives. What Jesus did for us on the cross needs to be worked out in our lives. Salvation happens in a moment. But we also start a journey of God changing us into the likeness of his Son, who is holy, 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 sinless and perfect in all ways. This work will be complete when we meet Jesus, either through death or when Jesus returns. And 1 John 3 and 2 says, Dear friends, we're already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And Paul in Romans 7 talks about that battle in life where he's not what he wants to be, but he's on that journey. And he longs for the day when he'll see Jesus face to face. Because in that moment, sin will have no influence on our lives anymore. 
There'll be no struggle anymore. There'll be no disappointment you feel when you get up in the morning and think, I'm really going to do well today, Lord. And five minutes after you get off your knees praying, bang, you had a row with your wife. And it's all your fault. Folks, them days will be over. There'll not be those struggles anymore. We will be perfectly holy and pure, just like Christ. It's not surprising that the Spirit is called the Holy Spirit because that's one of His primary activities, the work of our sanctification, the process from having been declared holy to living holy lives. And the Holy Spirit works in us from the moment we are saved and the moment He enters our lives, He works in our lives, purifying us in our lifestyle, in our behaviors, it begins to change us. I remember someone who uh, wasn't from a church background, came to the Alpha, they got saved. And I remember the next night at Alpha, they said, you'll never guess what happened. He says, what? He said, I was driving down the road, and I was footing about with Mysterio, and it came onto a Christian channel, and it, it was lovely, I just listened to it. They'd never done that before. They were never interested. They never found worship uh, pleasurable and something that they wanted to, to, to listen to and be part of. You see, the Holy Spirit was in them, working in them, changing them, changing us from the inside out. Uh, Wayne Grudem puts it like this. He says, to make us more holy in actual conduct of life. Folks, if the Holy Spirit is in us and we have given Him freedom in our lives, we should be being made more holy as we go through our life. And folks, if you have become a Christian and there's nothing changed in your life when you became a Christian and your lifestyle or your behavior, well then there's, there's something wrong. Because the Holy Spirit is always at work in us, changing us and shaping us. And sometimes as Christians we find that's great and then things come into your life that, 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 that block the work of the Holy Spirit and, and before you know where you are you think, well actually I'm, I'm worse than I used to be. And we need to deal with the things that are in our lives that block the work of the Holy Spirit that He could be actively at work in us changing us, making us more like Jesus. Even the lives of unbelievers, there's something, some restraining influence of the Holy Spirit as He convicts the world of sin. John 16, 8 says, And when He comes, He will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The Holy Spirit holds back the raw evil of sin in our world. The Holy Spirit is a holy restraining influence across our whole world. If this world, if this is what the world is like with that restraint of the Holy Spirit, imagine a world without God. Imagine the world where there was no restraints and evil was free to rule and to reign. Most of us have never seen raw evil. And I like detective sort of things on TV and I know you're going to say, well, I'm they're all made up, most of them and they're no true. It doesn't matter. The concept sometimes are all, that makes sense. But I know, I know that there's been a couple where they've caught this, usually a serial killer or whatever, and the, when the policeman has gone in to interview them and met them and they come out, you can see, there's just, you see it on their face. And they say, you know, they don't use the word raw, I can't remember what word they use, but it's like they had saw 
pure evil. It's all pure evil. And folks, what holds back that pure evil in our world is the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. When we become Christians, it's the Holy Spirit who brings that new life to our souls, breaking the power of sin in our lives through the work of Jesus on the cross. Paul says in Corinthians 6 and 11, some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed, you were made holy, you were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. After that initial break with sin, he produces in us growth and holiness. And a healthy Christian life where the Holy Spirit is the freedom to work, we should be growing in our holiness. What about you this morning? What about me? Are we growing in holiness? Not that we have attained it yet, but we should be growing in holiness. Are we this morning? Paul says in Philippians 3 and 12, he says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus has first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I've not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Paul recognized that in his journey through life since he met Jesus on the Damascus Road, that the Holy Spirit was purifying him. And he still knew, and that, you know, I think most of us say we'd be quite happy if we were like Paul. <laughs> but Paul knew, I've no attained it yet. There's still things that the Holy Spirit needs to work in me. There's still things that need to be sorted. There's still things that need to be put right. There's still uh, things in my life that I need uh, victory over. But he was on that journey. He was on that journey. I wonder, is the Holy Spirit changing you? I wonder, is that sense of you, if, if you look back over the years, you can see how things you used to do, you no longer do. Attitudes you used to have through ups and downs and the battles and the struggles that the Holy Spirit takes us through, that somehow he has shaved them off and they've got left behind as we grow in our relationship with him. But he also produces in us the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 and 22 says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Are you more loving than you used to be? Are you more joyful, more at peace? Are you more patient and kind and gentle? Are you good, faithful, and have more self-control in your lives? Not that we have attained it yet, but that we are growing in it. Folks, if not, then something is blocking the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because the Holy Spirit naturally, if he is in us, he will produce that fruit. He will produce that fruit. And for things that are blocking that, we need to ask God to show us of what it is and to ask him to remove it, that that Holy Spirit was the freedom to work in us and through us as he wills. 2 Corinthians 3 and 16 says, But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the Spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious 
image. I remember someone, I can't remember who it was, so it doesn't matter. If it was somebody here, I apologize, but I can remember someone. And they were struggling because I've been preaching and talking, and I still talk a lot about it, about God changing us into the likeness of Jesus. And they thought that that was wrong. You know, Jesus was God's son. We could never be like Jesus. Well, funny it says there, and the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed, as we are changed what? Into his glorious image. One day we will be like him. Hallelujah. One day we will shine like stars in the universe, the Bible says. And I shared that picture I had in, in the prayer room uh, last Sunday. And, you know, when I saw Jesus, uh, that song, when we meet Jesus, what will we do? And, and I fell at his feet and, and I wept and I wept and, and I saw the scars on his feet and I wept more. And then Jesus eventually took me and lifted me up and he looked me in the eye and he started to fill me with his love and with the glory of God. And it grew and it grew and grew to a burst into a bursting light. We will shine like Jesus. Isn't that amazing? No blemishes. No bad bits that we have to hide away. No uh, temper to fight with anymore. No wrong thoughts about other people. No trying to love everyone, even when they wind you up. We will be like him. It'll be perfect, perfect in every way. But it's not that nothing happens in the end, it's that. It's that we are growing to that as the Holy Spirit works in us. Jesus was gentle, meek, and mild. Folks, our generation are not keen on those words anymore. You need to be ruthless, you're told, if you want to make it. But Jesus was gentle, meek, and mild. Does that describe you? Does that describe me? The people around us say, I, he or she, they're so gentle. There's a real meekness around their lives. And they're mild. Or are we at least becoming more like Jesus. The work of the Holy Spirit is to produce in us holiness and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We're nearly out of time. I'll do a wee bit in this because I'm going to do a bit more in this next week, am I? The Holy Spirit reveals. The Holy Spirit also brings revelation. He brought revelation to the prophets and the apostles. It was the Holy Spirit who inspired the writers of the Bible. 2 Peter 1 and 20 says, Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. Similarly, the New Testament writers were inspired by God to write the Gospels and the letters and to make our, uh, that make up our Bible. And what they've written was inspired by the Holy Spirit who is all truth. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us. And when we are wrong, it teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. I'm going to finish it there. I'll pick it up next week. The Holy Spirit reveals the Holy Spirit brings revelation. And we'll look at that next week. Let's start praying.